Good day. Um, let me thank uh, the Heritage Foundation and uh, Ray Walser in particular for having me speak uh, to you today um, about the threat closer to home, Hugo Chavez, and the war against America, and I'll try and answer your two questions. Um, and I thank Ambassador uh, Otto Reich for joining me today to speak about this threat, which in my view is being ignored at great peril in America. Doug Schoen and I, two Democrats, tell this story with no partisan or ideological agenda. Uh, we have no ax to grind uh, about Chavez. Uh, national security is not a partisan matter as far as we're concerned. As political consultants, we've worked in over a dozen nations at the highest electoral levels, including the United States, Israel, Venezuela, and Bolivia, and we know what's going on in Iran and in Cuba. I've lived in, in, in Venezuela uh, from 1993 to 2006. I wrote, wrote over 500 columns and articles about the political economies of Latin America. And I was the strateg strategist for Claudio Fermin's campaign in his presidential campaign of 1993, which is why I went down there, met my wife, Maria de la Rosa, married there, stayed there. I was also the strategist for Manuel uh, Rosales in his presidential campaign of 2006. In both those campaigns, we proposed variations of the Alaska solution to oil and poverty, which I helped create in the 1970s. Some of you might be familiar with that, that model uh, that essentially wiped out um, uh, poverty in the, uh, among the native population. Neither of the winners in the elections in Venezuela, however, Rafael Caldera in 1993, Hugo Chavez in 2006, invested Venezuela's oil um, money in the free tools of free wealth creation for free people. Um, the result in both cases produced poverty and corruption. Venezuela's productivity has been falling since nationalization of oil and industry in 1976. Today, it is the richest failed state in the world. This is not the way it has to be, and this is not the way it was. From the 1930s to the 1960s, Venezuela had the highest consistent economic growth rate and the lowest inflation rate in the world. But I'm not here to talk about how Venezuela got it wrong. You don't have enough time for me to, to hear that, uh, but how America has got Chavez wrong. Chavez is a state sponsor of terror. He has supported the FARC in Colombia and terrorists in Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, with oil, with money, with weapons, with passports, with political support, and not just in the Middle East conflicts, but in Venezuela, Cuba, Bolivia, Ecuador, Argentina, and Nicaragua for a few. He operates a weekly flight between Caracas and Tehran that has no passenger lists, no immigration controls, no materials accounting, open to international inspection. To get on that plane, you need to be approved by Iranian and Venezuelan security. You can get your ticket from a Caracas travel agent who is designated by the US Treasury Department as a Hezbollah agent and money launderer. In Lebanon and Tehran, on the other side of that flight, there is a Venezuelan diplomat who is also designated as a Hezbollah agent. He facilitates money laundering and transfers of people and material between Venezuela and Hezbollah in the Middle East. Two governments are now investigating a plot where Hezbollah in Venezuela will kidnap Latin American Jews and sequester them in Lebanon. Last month, Seven of the 11 people arrested for trashing a Caracas synagogue were in the employ of Hugo Chavez, who called the break-in a simple robbery, a two-bit burglary. But the only thing stolen from the synagogue was a computer file with the name of every Jewish family along with their addresses and net worth. Hezbollah, in effect, has the kidnap list. In our book, we connect these dots. 
Jewish Venezuelans have also done so. A population of 30,000 Jewish Venezuelans has dropped by more than half since 1999. By his own words, Chavez is conducting an asymmetric war against America, which he calls the evil empire, and Israel, which he says is perpetrating a holocaust against the people of Palestine. He called, the president, he called President Bush the devil at the United Nations, and he says that President Obama smells of the same stench, the same sulfur he, he smelled <coughs> at the podium of the UN. He wants the presidents of the United States and Israel to be prosecuted internationally for the war in Gaza. In 2006, Chavez got 77 votes, national votes, to sit on the United Nations Security Council. His campaign message was to let Iran develop its nuclear program. Leave them alone. In 2007, the Colombian government confiscated 30 kilos of non-enriched uranium in a safe house identified in the computer files of Raul Reyes, the FARC leader, who was killed in Ecuador, uh, an Ecuador raid by Colombian forces in March of that year. In 2008, Chavez got the Russians to give him nuclear technology for processing uranium. Chavez says it's for peaceful purposes, but why the country with the most oil and gas in the continent and huge cheap hydropower needs nuclear power has not been explained. Venezuela is mining uranium on a site that is protected by a shoot down of aircraft entering its airspace. The government says it's a bicycle factory one of the 200 new businesses capitalized with $20 billion of investment that Venezuela has with Iran, Chavez and Ahmadinejad. Why a bicycle factory would have such military security has not been explained. Hezbollah has taken over an indigenous village near the border with Colombia. Chavez expelled the Christian missionaries there and now the Wayuyu Indians uh, have all become Muslims. The women cover their bodies in their faces and pray five times a day. The men are trained with weapons to prepare for Armageddon with the evil empire. The FARC are also suspected of harboring uh, near that village. The FARC, Hezbollah, and other terrorists in Venezuela may all be protected with Venezuelan identity cards and passports. Chavez has added seven million na names to the identity card list through a mission that he has, connected to, which is connected to the voter registration list, uh, and that's all happened, those seven million names have been added since uh, 2004. No independent audit of those lists has been permitted in the in intervening period. We have no idea who has Venezuelan passports. As opposed to the, to the FARC, uh, uh, to Iran, to Hezbollah, to Hamas, and to Al-Qaeda or others uh, on the terrorist list, Chavez has free access through our borders. He owns 14,000 Sitco gas stations. He moves billions of dollars in people in and out of America every day. Chavez has the means, the motive, and the opportunity to strike asymmetrically against America whenever he wants. What should we do about it? First, we should declare Chavez, his corporations, his ministers, his agents, state sponsors of terror, wherever the evidence makes a reasonable case it's true. And I would argue that not only this government, but uh, several other governments have that information and have not moved on it. Second, we should stop paying for Chavez's war against America. Last year, in that $700 billion giant sucking sound that went from American consumers to the oil producing states, Chavez got some $40 billion. The year before that, $37 billion. With his oil windfall since 2004, Chavez has spent $100 billion overseas in his war against America. 